What is up, people of YouTube? My name is Arturo, or you can call me Tro, and today, guys, I am back with another video. Guys, today we are gonna go over last night, SummerSlam 2020, my reactions to the show. Um, I'm gonna talk to you guys about what happened, everything you need to know, and my predictions on where this is gonna go from, or where WWE is gonna go from, um, from SummerSlam. Overall, great show, guys. Awesome. Better than I thought. Better than I ever expected, honestly. And I'm just glad. I'm happy we're going to be talking about it. And, yeah, let's get straight into this. Let's not waste any time at all. All right, guys. Starting off, the first match of the night, which I was surprised about. I actually didn't know, but this match actually started on the pre-show. It was. I thought it was going to be on the main card, which I think they announced that it was going to be on the main card. But I guess last minute, they switched it to the pre-show, which sucks. I didn't get to watch the match. Um... I heard it was pretty good. I heard it was all right. I heard it wasn't that bad. Um, but really, I can't really say much at all. Apollo Crews did retain the title, which I knew he was. Um, it was pretty easy. For my prediction, that was what's called. Uh, I knew Apollo Crews was going to win. I don't know where this goes from now. Hopefully, MVP, this is this does not hurt uh, the Hurt business. I really like MVP and Shelton, and Shelton Benjamin and Bobby Lashley stable that they have on Raw. Really cool, the Hurt Business. Hopefully the Hurt Business goes, um, let's call it a little bit, I don't know, like it elevates or I'm not sure. They get pushed more, I'm sorry, that's the word. Hopefully the Hurt Business gets pushed more and they do they do something with the Hurt Business. I heard, well this is gonna go, what's it called? This is gonna go a little bit later, but that we could possibly be seeing Keith Lee in the Hurt Business. That is something for later, another topic, but yeah. But hopefully the Hurt Business gets pushed from from here on out, even though MVP did lose, um, but Apollo Crews is great with the United States champion. I hope he stays uh, United States champion for a little bit longer. Hopefully he, what's it called? <clears throat> they build him up, um, make him a strong US champion. Uh, I like Apollo Crews as champion. I think this is <clears throat> long overdue and I think he really deserves it. So yeah, Apollo Crews wins and we'll see where, where it goes from here. I don't know. Like I said, hopefully the Hurt Business keeps looking strong and they keep building them up and I hopefully or they keep pushing the hurt the hurt business and for Apollo Crews I hope they keep building them up as a strong United States champion yeah so first match of the night pre-show match let's get straight to the main card my opinion wasn't really a great match it was basically this was just a setup for later and this also <clears throat> what's it called is gonna set up for Sasha versus Bailey because <clears throat> how this match was set up I think in my opinion which basically came true was that Sasha was going to help Bailey retain her title but later on in the night when it comes to Oscar versus ba uh, Oscar versus Sasha Bailey is not going to uh, help her intervene at all to help Sasha and make her lose the title which she did spoiler alert which we'll get on to later and talk more about and we're basically going to it's finally I think we're finally going to get the Sasha uh, heel turn which she's already healed but turn on Bailey and they're gonna feud so yeah that's what it led up to and i was right about it so yeah i'm two and oh for my predictions which i'm really happy about <clears throat> i bet i did really good on my predictions tonight or for summer slam but yeah overall not that great of a match my one of my biggest problems that i had with the um with summer slam was the fan interaction like the thunderdome is cool but <clears throat> it was really lacking maybe this match wasn't that great either but the fan interaction was like it was really quiet um in some parts of the match so for like when they had good spots or something like that it was really quiet later on the later on in the night it got better but i don't know for some matches it really affected some of the spots and some of the uh cool like things that they did and with the with the fans little reaction it really ruined it so yeah but i'll talk about more of that later for other matches where i noticed it more but yeah, Sasha and Bailey, not I mean, Asuka and Bailey, not really great of a match, but it was basically just a setup for later. So yeah, next match. All right, guys, second match of the card. We had the Street Profits taking on Andrade Sainamas and Angel Garza. Um, really good match. Better than I thought. Better than I expected, I guess you could say. Um, I thought it was going to be not really great of a match. Um, at the beginning of the match, we had Angelo Dawkins. No, not Angelo Dawkins. Montez Ford basically just getting beat on most of the match until we get until he tags out brings Angelo Dawkins in for a, a hot tag comes in takes everybody out then Angel Garza tags Andrade uh they what's it called Angelo Dawkins tags Montez Ford they have a bit of a sequence 
um, like I said, pretty good match. Um, they had a really good end sequence, I thought, um, with the get with the few what's it called, with the few false finishes, which was really good. But this is one thing I was talking about when it came to the Thunderdome and the fan interactions. I think they 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 had some really good sequences and spots in this match, but there was no really like fan interaction, like no cheering and stuff like that. I think it was also delayed, like the delayed reactions from the fans that basically just ruined the what's called the cool spots that they had in this match, I think in my opinion. Like when I thought it was really cool, I was like, oh shit, and then nothing, like the crowd was silent, dead. And I think it ruined some parts of this match. This match, I think this match could have been a ton, 10 times better if the rea if the reactions were on time. Maybe it was just connection, connection problems and stuff like that. But yeah, I think this match was pretty good. If I had to rate it, I'd give it like a six to seven out of 10. Yeah, Andrade and Angel Garza did not pick up the victory, which I was disappointed in. I really wanted them to be the tag team champions because really the street profits have not had a memorable reign at all like they haven't had a good reign at all even like <clears throat> they the only thing they've been really doing is been feuding with the viking raiders and that was shit not as good as a match not as good as a few they as they could have had and i think if andrade and angel would have won um they would have had a better what's called a uh, tag team title reign prediction was wrong on this i had Andrade and Angel going over Street Profits, but no, I was wrong. So I am two. I'm two for one. Yeah. So two right predictions and one what's it called wrong prediction. So yeah, let's get on to the next match. Next up, we have Mandy versus uh, Sonya Deville. Um, this match had a change of stipulation on Friday Night SmackDown. It was a late change um, from a hair versus hair match to a loser leaves WWE match and a no disqualification match, which I thought was pretty dope. I thought these guys were gonna go kill it. Um, they changed the stipulation, which I was happy about because the hair versus hair match, it would have been dope. I mean, I feel like they would have still put on a great match, but I think this would have been better. But honestly, in my opinion, um, I think this match could have been 10 times better, but it really didn't live up to the hype. I think it had some good spots in it, but when it comes to a no disqualification match or like an extreme rules match, this was the worst no disqualification match I've ever seen. Like when it came to spots, like the only no disqualification spots that happened was um, Sonya attacking Mandy with the chair um, a few times, and then Mandy bringing out a table that was never used throughout the match. I thought they would have at least slammed, I mean, broke one through the table, and then another part, Mandy like Sonya was on the other side of the table that wasn't broken, and uh, and M Mandy was on the other side. And instead of Mandy picking up the chair and going over to Sonya and hitting her with the chair, she just slides the chair through the table and Sonya just dodges all the <laughs> all the flying chairs going at her. Like it would have been cool if it would have made contact with her. Like it would have been like kinda it would've looked kinda cool. But no, like they didn't even sell it. Like Mandy was just I mean Sonya was just moving them, dodging them. So there was no extremeness at all to this. Um, really kind of disappointed. I thought this would have been a little bit better of a match. I would rate this like maybe a six out of ten. Six or six or five out of ten. I really don't think this was that great of a match. I really like the ending though. Uh, Mandy Rose picked up the win. This was a great feud. I feel like if they didn't put the loser leaves WWE match, I think I knew Mandy was gonna win. But I thought it would have been dope if Sony would have been put over and then built and then Put, like push from this point on but i think honestly i'm not sure if sonia is actually leaving wwe i think she not like of course like when t when they say loser leaves wwe match like sometimes it really doesn't happen unless it's like a retirement match but i think just mandy or sonia is unhappy with her spot in wwe right now and i think she might actually leave because she even posted on on instagram she was like goodbye uh to all you to all my friends like she posted that and i was like what i'm like is she actually leaving i'm not sure it could be all bullshit and i could be wrong but i think she might actually be unhappy with the decision uh like or unhappy with their status in WWE right now so she could actually leave but you never know this could be all bullshit and she comes back like in a month and joins raw and leaves let's call it leave smackdown joins raw instead you never know guys it's you never know what happens in WWE, but I was when she said when she posted that on Instagram and when the this match was changed to loser leaves WWE match, I'm like, oh shit. And then Sonya lost. I'm like, maybe she just doesn't want to be in WWE anymore. You never know, guys. You never know. 
Uh, yeah, well, my favorite part of this match was the ending. Um, the ending sequence was all right. Uh, it wasn't that bad. It looked pretty good. Mandy hit Sonya with three knees to the face. The last knee looked great. Like she, Sonya sold that right. I mean, Sonya sold that awesomely. And then Mandy hit the knee perfect. And then she goes fairy tale ending basically, like Tommaso Ciampa fairy tale ending. And that was it. Oh, I think she gets up and hits her again with another knee. But yeah, other than that, um, overall six out of ten match in my opinion. Five, five out of ten, six out of ten at its best. Worst extreme rules match I've ever seen though. But yeah, my favorite part of the match was the ending once, um, basically the celebration when Mandy won. Sonya was outside like shocked, she was and mad of course, but um, Mandy was in the ring celebrating, and then Otis comes out, which was really dope, and uh, what's it called celebrating and like ch basically just really happy for Mandy. Picks him up on her shoulder, carry him, carrying her around the ring, and then at the end she does like the worm. But it was like a terrible version of the worm. Like she does, it was a good like worm, but she didn't move forward at all. Like like um, Otis does, she like just stayed in one spot doing it. But um, that was really a good moment. It was like a heartwarming moment in my opinion. So yeah, uh, let's get on to the next match. All right, guys. Next up, we have, I think, in my opinion, the best match of the night. This match was just amazing overall, from the good spots it had to the amazing storytelling it had. It was an amazing match. One of my favorite matches of the year, in my opinion. Really great. Um, this match was amazing from start to finish. Amazing. So we have, of course, Dominic Mysterio taking on Seth Rollins. Um, it was Dominic's first match ever, and can I just say Dominic fucking killed, killed it in this match, like. He like I don't know what's up with new superstars, but they're doing great. Like Pat McAfee at Takeover did an amazing job, great match, and then Dominic Mysterio. Of course, Dominic I think would have a little bit more experience since his father is Rey Mysterio, but still he fucking killed it. And he like he did this match was great. Like I said, from the spots to the storytelling, the storytelling was absolutely amazing. We had like at the beginning of the match like Dominic or before the match he said. Bray, I, or Dad, I don't want you to get involved in the match at all. Let me do this by myself. And he's like, all right. The match starts off. He comes out. Oh, wait. First off, can we talk about the fucking attire, bro? Rip, fucking Seth Rollins had an amazing attire that needs to be converted into an elite right away. All right, guys. This is the attire I'm talking about. He has a tire. One of, the one of my favorite attires that Seth Rollins has ever worn he was wearing the i think the 97 yeah the halloween havoc 97 rain mysterio attire like a parody of it which is amazing like i wish more superstars did this like when they have rivalries and stuff like that <clears throat> where they would wear each other's like <clears throat> old gear or like or gear inspired by their opponent's gear like i love those type of concepts and this one thing i'm talking about seth wearing the what's it called like i said the halloween havoc as you can tell right there seth and then ray on the right and the picture, shout out to nodq.com. It's Instagram. I'm using their picture. I, this is the best picture I could find. I couldn't find one on Google or stuff like that, but the best one I could find, like I said, heat as a tire. This is what I'm talking about. I, I'm going to try to make this Seth Rollins my, it's called Spare Seth Rollins that I have. But yeah, like I was talking about, this match was amazing. Like I said, from start to finish, like cool ass spots, storytelling. My favorite match of SummerSlam, I think I would I would say my favorite, one of my favorite matches from the main roster of the year. Like this match was so great, guys. I I can't say enough good things about it. They had some dope ass spots at the beginning where Dominic was getting pushed around by Rey Mysterio, and then Do I mean by Rey Mysterio, Dominic was getting pushed around by Seth Rollins, basically out wrestling him, and then um, Dominic going with that lucha background, doing some cool ass like things to get out the holds, like get out the headlocks, get out the uh, what's it called the arm locks and stuff like that it was really dope um they had another dope spot was at the like um seth Rollins is hitting a few good candle shots on on dominic and he sets him up at the top rope and it looked like he was gonna go for a russian leg sweep um with the kendo stick through a table from the second rope and then no dominic reverses it and he does the russian leg sweep with the kendo stick to seth Rollins through the table it was freaking dope um, it got to the point where uh, Buddy Murphy got into the match and he was about to do 
or he was about to poke um, Dominic's eye with the steel steps, and then Ray comes in and finally helping Dominic. Even though Dominic didn't uh, didn't want any help, he comes in because he knew this was bullshit, and he's like, I, I won't get into the match, but I'll at least help you with Buddy, and he does that. And then it got to the point where these two guys were getting it, or where Buddy Murphy gets out handcuffs, and he goes to handcuffs, I think, Dominic, but instead they handcuff Ray, to the what's it called uh, to one of the ring ropes, and Seth and Buddy Murphy were going out because um, what's it called Dominic's mom was coming out, and I guess they wanted to bring her closer to the ring or like not go attack her, but I guess to show her what what's it called what they're doing to her, to his husband to her husband and son. Dominic comes in and attacks them, and it was really dope. And he gets him back inside the ring, goes for a six one nine or no. First he goes for a frog splash and he hits that hoe. He like a tribute to Eddie Guerrero, which was amazing. And then he goes for a 619. He hits the 619 kick. And then when he goes for the another frog splash, oh Seth Rollins puts his knees up. And basically, what's it called? Rey Mysterio was like disappointed because he knew what happened. And Ray or Seth was pissed. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna finish this. He goes for a curb stomp right in front of Rey Mysterio. Right he curb stomp curb stomps Dominic right in front of his father he goes for the pin one two three it would have been dope if we got a kick out but it, it was still a great match overall um some of my favorite spots of the match were like um like this was Dominic's first WWE match ever and like just Dominic going or Ray being like you got this son you got this and stuff like that it was great storytelling guys one of the one of my favorite summer slam matches ever and one of my favorite matches of the year. Like I said, I can't say enough good things about this match. Nine out of ten, eight, nine out of ten, ten out of ten. Like I, I can't find anything wrong about this match, guys. I really can't. Really great. And hopefully soon I'll be making that custom set the roll. And so, oh, such a great attire, guys. Such a great attire. Yeah, let's get on to the next match. It just went up from here, guys. Like it just kept getting better and better from here. All right, guys. Next match that we have up. It is the Raw Women's Championship match. We have Oscar versus Bailey. Oscar's second. I mean, Oscar versus Bailey. Oscar versus Sasha Banks. Oscar's second match of the night. And guys, I can already tell you, I like this match way better than um, the Oscar and Bailey match. It was just, I don't know, ten times better than the Oscar and Bailey match, in my opinion. I don't know. These guys always have like such great chemistry, and every match they put on or they're with, it's always amazing. And I want to see more of it. I do want to see more of it. I think. If they would have had more time, it would have been, of course, better. But for the time they had, it wasn't that long of a match. It was a short match. But these guys were going back and forth and the Oscar lock and then the uh, bang statement. Really great match. Um, the finish to the match is exactly what I told you guys. So basically, it was the same finish as the, uh, what's it called, as the Oscar and Bailey match. Uh, Sasha was at the, what's it called? Um, Sasha was on the ropes. Uh, Oscar comes running, going for another hip attack. And this time, Sasha moves out the bank, moves out of the way, but Bailey, instead of taking the hit like Sasha took the hit, no, she just moved out the way. So she didn't really distract Oscar as much. So when uh, what's it called? So when ba or when Sasha went to go put on the bank statement, she got out of it, or Oscar got out of it right away and put her in the Oscar lock. And there was she tapped. Ba I mean, uh, Sasha tapped great match like i said overall but of course i knew this was going to happen i knew that um that what's called that oscar was going to retain her title at the end of the day i knew she wasn't going to win the uh what's it called i knew she wasn't going to win the smackdown women's champion she wasn't going to walk out dual champ because of course yes, they are for sure now they are going to set up for um what's it called for bailey versus uh sasha i don't know when but they are setting it up i thought we would at least get a heel turn tonight like i thought we would get um i thought we would get sasha attacking bailey but we didn't but for sure if we don't see it if we didn't see it on summer sun we are going to see it this sunday at payback because that's when they have to defend their raw wins tag team titles which i know for sure i almost almost a hundred percent a thousand percent sure that they're gonna lose the the what's called the tag team titles and then that's when sasha banks is going to betray bailey and going to go after her title and they're going to start feuding, which I cannot wait for. Bailey and uh, Sasha have an amazing chemistry. Every match they put on is fantastic. Just the other day, I was re-watching the uh, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn match, and that match was just fantastic. And I hope when the next time they face, we have just a match 
as great and as fantastic as that match. Yeah, so overall, I would rate, I think this was like the third best match of the night. Um, really great. I would give this a 7 to 8 out of 10 for sure. This one was way better than the Asuka and Bailey match in my opinion. Like I said, third match of the night in my opinion. Alright, let's get on to the next match. Alright guys, next match that we have up, it is the WWE Championship match. It is Drew McIntyre versus the legend killer Randy Orton. Now guys, this was a fantastic match in my opinion. It was honestly the second best match of the night. Seth Rollins versus Dominic of course was the best match of the night in my opinion. But this match was a close, close second. Like, it was, of at first it was a slow, um, it started off kind of slow. But it just, like, what I liked about this match is that it wasn't a spot fest and stuff like that. Full of false finishes, but I loved that, what's it called? It was a hard-hitting match. That That's what I would say. It was a hard-hitting match. Fantastic chemistry with the, between these two. I wouldn't mind seeing another, another match between these, but right now I don't want to see another one. But later down the line, in a few years, I would love to see another match between these guys. Um, I'm really happy. I really happy that Drew McIntyre retained the title super glad about that I've been loving Randy Orton as of late I don't know why his he's just been killing it as a heel as the legend killer again always loved him as legend killer Randy Orton the last few runs he's had as a heel and face that have just they're just not it like they were not great at all in my opinion but with this Randy Orton with legend killer and his matches with Edge and like stuff like that it's just been fantastic and but what I wanted was Drew McIntyre to retain the title. He's been also having a fantastic reign ever since he beat Brock. He's just been amazing as champion. And I wanted him to stay WWE champion for a little bit longer. But this match kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time because I would, because these guys were, did not hit their finisher at all. They didn't hit an RKO. They didn't hit a Claymore or a punt kick, which I like. They teased it so many times and it never happened. How the match ended was that, um, what's it called? He, Randy Orton was going for a punt kick, punt kick, and Drew McIntyre catches him, picks him up for a power bomb, and then Drew McIntyre goes to the corner, goes for a claymore, Randy Orton dodges it, RKO, and then McIntyre pushes him out and does a backslide, one, two, three. That was it, end of the match. I was hyped about it because uh, for me, I was predicting the match like it was nothing. Like I was like, oh, he's about to hit a Claymore here. Oh, wait, what? No Claymore? Oh, he's about to hit an RKO. What? No RKO? Oh, he's going to hit a punt? What? He didn't hit the punt? And like throughout the whole time, I was like, what the hell's going on? And then he goes for the backslide. Boom, one, two, three. Like, what the hell? He wins the title. It was just great, guys. Fantastic. I love that. That it kept me on the edge of my seat. And that's what I loved also that what's called it was unpredictable. Like I said, for me, I thought I was like, oh, I already know what's going to happen. He's going to hit an RKO. He's going to hit a Claymore. He's going to hit a punt. No, none of that happened throughout the whole time. It kept me guessing, guys. And that's what I loved about this match. And like I said, hard-hitting match throughout the whole time. Just great, guys. Great chemistry these two guys have. Amazing. Like I said, I want to see a match between them. Future down the line would be fantastic. Yeah, love this match. I think, in my opinion, second best match of the night. Yeah, let's get on to the last and final match. All right, guys, we are down to the final match of the night. We have the Fiend Brave White taking taking on Braun Strowman for the Universal Championship. I was hyped for this match because. I was just hyped for the Fiend winning the Universal Championship, guys. Like, really, honestly. Like, Strowman, he has not had a good title reign. This was not a good title reign at all. Ever since he's won at Mania, it has not been that great. I didn't know. I don't know if they announced this on Friday. I don't know. I didn't watch Friday Night SmackDown. I only saw some parts of it. But um, I don't know if they announced that it was going to be a false Count Anywhere match. I was surprised when they announced it at the beginning of the match. I was like, what? False Count Anywhere? When they, when they say this... But I guess, yeah, falls count anywhere. Um, my opinion, this was a solid, like, 7 out of 10 at its best. Maybe 6.5 out of 10. Um, I don't think this was the best match. I think it could have been a lot better, in my opinion. It had some dope spots. Like, it was pretty cool. But other than that, it wasn't that great. Like, it was still all right. I mean, what's it called? Way better than some of the other matches on the card, in my opinion. Uh, I think the fourth best match. A few other spots. Um, they were uh, throwing some heavy shots at the what's it called at the entrance trap, like throwing each other into the uh, what's it called into like the lights they had set up and stuff like that. 
and then they went big man and triple h go look at the bat or are watching the show and seeing how everything goes they're throwing each other into the wall which looks sick and then um we got a bray wyatt what's it called sister Al sister abigail on the floor did one two no wasn't it they fight back all the way into the ring braun Strowman does i think he hits two running power slams on uh bray wyatt one two nope not the three he cuts open the mat and he takes off like the little padding that they have and he tries to pick him up braun Sh or fiend escapes for the from the power slam he does like the year nagi like basically like a rock bottom to uh braun Strowman on the wood he picks him up boom sister abigail he hits it but it wasn't really great he didn't really hit it that well he picks him up again another sister abigail and one, two, three, we have a new undisputed or undisputed new universal champion, the Fring, the Fiend Bray Wyatt. Sorry guys, I cannot talk today. Yeah. The Fiend Bray Wyatt, which I'm hyped about. I'm finally glad the Fiend's Universal Champion. Um, like I said, a really great or pretty good match overall, not super terrible. But what happened after the match was insane, guys. Was insane. The Fiend picks up the title. He holds it up. He's the new champ. We're all hyped that Fiend's finally champion. But someone comes from behind him and fucking spears his ass. <laughs> like, Roman Reigns returned, guys. Roman Reigns returned to WWE after almost a, what's it called? Like, ever since April, he, Roman Reigns has not showed up to WWE. Uh, he left because he, what's it called? He didn't really want to get sick. Uh, or uh, get the chance of catching the coronavirus. So he left, but now he's finally back after Fiend has won the title. Reigns comes in, like I said, Spears, Bray Wyatt. He, what's it called? He gives nasty ass chair shots to Braun Strowman. And then he waits for, uh, for Bray Wyatt to come back up. He spears him again. And he holds up the title. And I think, guys, we're getting a heel Roman Reigns. He holds up the title. And I think we're getting a heel Roman Reigns. He held up the title. And he had a shirt on that said, wreck everyone and leave. And he was talking mad shit to Braun Strowman and Fiend throughout the whole time. You um, Like, to Braun Strowman, he's like, he's like, I'm the reason you have this right now. He holds up the title to Bray Wyatt. And he's like, you ain't ready for this responsibility yet. It's me. This is mine. And it was fucking dope, guys. Like, we are, I think we are finally seeing a heel Roman, Reign, Roman Reigns. And then he posted today on Instagram talking shit to Randy Orton how he lost the, the match for the WWE Championship. It was dope, guys. Like, it was honestly really dope. And I, I'm hoping that we finally get a, Ro a heel Roman Reigns. And that'd be dope. Like, I was shocked. Like, it was crazy to see Roman Reigns there. It was, like, one of the first times I was ever happy to see Roman Reigns. Like, I am not, like, of course, I'm one of the people that hate him cause, or... They hated on him how he gets over pushed and stuff like that, but he surprised me and it was really dope to see him there. And I cannot wait if we see Roman Reigns versus the Fiend, like that would be fucking dope. Like it'd be dope for the Universal Championship or even a, a triple threat with Braun Strowman. That'd be super cool too. Amazing. These guys have great matches before. Also with Bray Wyatt, even before he was the Fiend with Roman Reigns, he's had great matches before. So yeah, I cannot wait for this guys. Like if we, I cannot wait. I don't know. I'm just super hyped. Overall, SummerSlam was an amazing uh, pay-per-view event. Way better than I ever expected it to be. So, yeah. Overall, I would say I would give this a solid 7, 7.5, maybe an 8 on a good day out of 10 for a pay-per-view. One of the best pay-per-views of the year so far. I don't know. I just hope it keeps getting better from here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. I would really appreciate if you guys liked this video. Also, subscribe. I am bringing you guys content every day monday through friday sometimes saturday and sunday as you could see from my last video from yesterday's video i uploaded on a sunday which i really usually don't but yeah, i am gonna try, like i said try to upload daily now guys um i hope you guys all i can say is hope you guys enjoy please like subscribe and i'll see you guys next time peace out